What's the old man doing today? Got a local sawmill making some cookies. We do it with chainsaws, but this guy does it right. That's a lot more tables. Yeah. Well, today's project is a little different, and what I've got is a, a stubborn 576 that goes to high idle and stays there. I'm going to do a leak down test, you know, just make sure the bottom end is, is solid. And I guess what I wanted to go through today is how, how do you do that when you come up with a generic kit, sort of like this Mighty Vac kit. You know, it's like 50 bucks. You can get this at, you know, Napa or Harbor Freight or a whole bunch of places. So now I've got the kit, which is really meant for automotive. How do I adapt it to a chainsaw? And before I get started, we got puppies in the house. And they've been chewing through my cables. I think the first thing I need to do is, this happens to be the charger for my camera. Yeah, and the camera's got no way of recharging unless I fix this, obviously. So let's start the day with this. We have power, so the video will happen in spite of the dog. This is a plural. Let's take a peek inside. Make sure everything looks healthy in there. Oh, it looks almost brand new. It's got to seal up the exhaust. And I don't think I have a... I don't think I have a plate made up for that. So I'm going to have to make up a plate. So what I do is I'm going to take a piece of uh, flat stock and just cut it. Drill in the holes. Making sure I've got room in there. And then... Uh, I'll go cut a piece of, of uh, tire tube in order to make a seal for the exhaust side. That's step number one. The reason I turned it the way it was is I wanted the stuff to go to the floor instead of up on the bench to those people who are going to give me crap.
So basically, I guess it really doesn't matter how you punch the hole, but you got to punch a hole in the rubber like that. And there's your seal. So there we have my exhaust cover. This used to be a perfectly good motorcycle tube. It was brand new in the box. Jeez. Sacrifice for the chainsaw hobby. Motorcycle hobby has been pushed to the back burner. These punches have been really useful for making gaskets and stuff. I probably ought to do a video on that, but some of the older saws where I can't get gaskets, you know, like muffler gaskets and base gaskets if I need them, I just build them. I haven't put a lot of focus on that on the channel. Um, it's, that's not a place where a lot of people want to be. They'd rather just be able to go buy stuff, you know. Now, on these, being auto-tunes, of course, they're a little more... Uh, they're a little bit more of a pain in the ass. But one of the things I've seen with auto-tunes is the man intake manifolds down there, those tubes get tore. Which is a strong possibility on this saw. Part of the thing here is I really want to test the manifold as well as the seals because a lot of times it's the manifold that leaks. So I've got to come up with a way of plugging that stuff. Well, I went through all that trouble and found out pretty quick that I had a leak. It wouldn't build pressure. And so I took this little tube and put my ear around, started hearing the hissing, found that. So it acts like it has an air leak because guess what it does looks to me like that's been split for a while those those edges are all rounded and everything and vibrate running like that for quite some time I don't see any damage inside it looks like it's 
brand new inside. So, I guess auto tune fed it fuel. <laughs> but when I got it, it was it was running pretty uh, high idle, so we knew we had some kind of an air leak somewhere. Just a matter of where. These saws here, this is the a 576. I like these. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that Husky chose to let these go away uh, sooner than the 372 X Torx. I think this is a better saw. You know, for the same kind of money, I think these are better saws. Now, I understand there's all the momentum and marketing and the name and all that with the 372, and they have their own, you know, fan base. They, they do a good job, don't get me wrong. It's just I happen to like these better. Just my personal, humble opinion. It was funny because I had a young fella ask me about what I would do if I was in his shoes. And I hate doing that because everybody has a different metric. And what's right for me is not right for everybody else. So my um, humble opinion is simply that. It's an opinion based on my priorities, not somebody else's. But the question was, 372 X Torque, one of these, or wait for the 572? And my answer was simply this. Um, if you've got to work right now and you can't wait six months to, to the end of the year for a, a 572, get the 576, you know, the Auto-Tune. It's a good saw. And, yeah, I mean, if you get an extremely good price on a 372 X-Torque, yeah, that's a price point thing for me. But all things being equal, if you can wait, wait, get the 572. If you can't wait, get the 576. That's my opinion. Now, there's going to be people who vehemently disagree with me on that. But I'm just saying, that's how I feel. Now, what I have to do is put the stuff away because I have another project. Because I have to wait for the boot to come in. I've got another project I have to put up on the bench. So, camera off. Let me clean things off. Here are the birds in the background. Got some baby birds now. Now, this makes, I don't know what, two or three now that I've got to wait for parts for. And the saw that i got to work on now, I don't have to wait for any parts. All I gotta do is assemble it. And I'm not quite sure how it happened, but it was virtually a brand new saw. And somehow it got run over. So I need to see what we have for bits and pieces here. Well, it just so happens I've got the seals, and um, it's actually important to know which is the right seal. Here's the part number, 503-260-301. This one's for the clutch side on the crank, okay? And using OEM is better than using aftermarket. This is for the flywheel side. Part number, 505-275-719. That's the Husqvarna part number. So these two seals, you have to get those and put them in the cases. Um, because when they give you the case assembly, unlike some of the other case assemblies that they have, those seals are not included. Okay? All right. So let's start taking down what we have just to see what we have. You know, Bob is right. It's like... How many 372s can you do before it gets kind of boring? You know? So I'm not going to dwell on it because there's an awful lot of people out there who've done 372 builds. So I don't really have to add to that stack of, you know, stuff. See, that cover's busted here too, so... I just called those the folks and said they need to get some more parts for me in order to do this job.
Now I also believe, you know, leave as much of the factory seal um, as possible doing these jobs. So sometimes it may be a little awkward on how I go about doing things, but I will sacrifice convenience to keep the factory seals as much as possible. And that includes muffler and through the intake. So I'm, I'm going to try to take the whole top end off in one part and then try to put it back on this case in one piece. You know what I'm saying? For base gasket and case gasket. No boy. Let me see if I have one. I might have one. Uh, I've got aftermarket, but then I don't want to use that stuff. I want to use. So I think I have enough stuff to complete the project. Can't forget this little guy right here. This goes on the crankshaft between the sleeve that sits on the crankshaft underneath the clutch for the uh, oil pump to ride on and main bearing seal our main seal main seal and gaskets so let's see if we can proceed That's how it should be. That's why the pullers are so much better than the press concept, you know. The right bushings, you know, it doesn't stress anything. Just much, 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 much better approach.
got another idea for a uh, pusher for the 372 flywheel side. I think what I'm going to have it do is slide down a uh, threaded rod in order to get it lined up, you know. First thing I have to do is put a through hole in it. It's kind of a little hokey here, but let me see if it works. The idea is to let that center it some. No, oh, it's in there. It's in there nice and even. A little further than I'd like. That'd be all right. Let me pull this one out and see how much room I have in there. Oh yeah, I'm. That's in good shape. It's actually perfect. So I would say that this is a success. And the beauty is it hits up in this shoulder right there. And it's going to get the same... Yeah, see it's on the shoulder. It's going to get the same distance every time. Nice and even. The other nice thing about it is it gets right to the outside of the uh, of the seal yeah that's i can't can't pull up that a bit it's about 15 thousandths deeper than i would normally do if you look in there where the original seal was went to right there about i don't know a little bit past halfway so it literally can go in almost to there where it's that far in and still be fine and not interfere with the bearing or nothing so by going in an extra ten thousandths all i did is i set it to there which is right in the middle of of that surface area for the bearing pocket or for the seal pocket. That's perfect. I don't think I'm going to change a thing. I guess what I'll probably do is take one of these, just chop it off here, you know, to line it up. So, all right. I think I'm going to call this a night and then tomorrow come out here and assemble the saw. See, I've got all the standard Husqvarna shop tools. I mean, I've got just about every one of them now. I've been collecting as time goes on. And, you know, they're pretty useful things. 372s. Um, I've got the... I guess I have 372, 390, 395, 576, 346... 562, 550. I've got all that stuff um, uh, in here. And of course, a lot of that bleeds over to other saws, you know. But yeah, while well, I have all that stuff, and it's nice to have as a backup. But basically, I want to be able to pull a box out and have everything I need to pull the crank through. The, you know, assemble the cases and seal drivers. And right now, that's all I need for a 372. This bushing to pull the crank through the cases 
Now I'm going to modify it somewhat. This is for clutch side seal, and this is what you just saw, flywheel side seal. And I'll have it all in a box, you know, for me. I'll go to the cabinet, pull the box out, and everything I need right there. You know, I'm getting kind of old, and I don't want to have to hunt and fight for stuff. So, anyway. I think that worked. It's a lot easier for me to make. So, no, I think I'm going to call that a night. I got my cases together. And uh, I guess right now, from this point on, it's pretty much block and tackle. I kind of like the way that came out. I really do. Talk to you later. Bye for now.